Thanks for listening to Dunedin's story. If you've come across Dunedin in the past, you might think of diamonds. We started out as a diamond explorer in 2015, and over the last year, refocused the company on copper exploration. We always owned a copper project. We acquired two new copper projects over the last year and a bit. We started exploring, drilling in November, and just now in January, we're able to announce a discovery. So we had a great start to the year, and I'll tell you more about this. Keep in mind, I'll be making forward-looking forward statements. Um, use your own judgment, question them. And this is an overview of our project, of our copper portfolio. What they all have in common are they are 100% owned, three copper porphyry projects. They are large size projects with a big footprint and size potentials. Porphyries, by their very natures, are large systems. And if we are successful, then these can be elephant deposits. And lastly, all of our projects are advanced exploration. That means they had already historic drilling. They are not greenfield. We know there's copper. And they have already, to some degree, been de-risked. Why do we like copper? We really like the long-term fundamentals. Essentially, anything with the name green in it all green technologies require a lot of copper, whether that's electric vehicles, whether that's wind, solar. All these technologies are very copper intensive. Electric cars take up to 10 times the amount of copper than a conventional car. Wind and solar energy take up to four or six times the amount of copper than coal and gas fired. So there is a huge amount of copper demand coming our way, even if you um, believe only half of the, the forecasts or the ambitions of all the car companies, governments, energy companies, there will be a lot of demand for copper. And if you look at the other side of the coin, the supply side, there is not very much in the pipeline at all. Many large mines are declining in grade. We've come out of a long downturn, not much exploration has happened, and the pipeline of development projects are at an all-time low. This is a graph by Wood and McKenzie, respected um, consultancy. Many analysts forecast something similar. There's a very significant supply gap opening up. Four to six million tons is the gap that Wood McKenzie forecasts in an overall market of just over 20 million tons. So that's significant. And that uh, requires a much higher copper price to be filled for new projects to be developed to fill that demand that we see coming. Before I dive into our project, a couple of words about the team. The founder of Dunedin is Chris Taylor. Many of you will know Chris from our sister company, Great Bear, which he also founded, which is one of the biggest gold discovery in Canada in um, recent times, one of the best performing companies on the TSX venture. Many people think of Chris obviously as a gold guy, but he actually has a lot of porphyry experience. He started his career as a geologist at Imperial Metals for 10 years almost exploring and drilling for copper porphyries in North America. <clears throat> so he's a very, very capable um, geologist and very knowledgeable about porphyries. Myself, my background is more financial, commercial. I'm covering the, the business side between the two of us. Um, I worked for many years with Rio Tinto, also on some of their copper projects, some of the largest copper mines in the world, Escondida, the largest of all, or Oyotolga in Mongolia. And last but not least, I uh, should mention John Robbins, who is a very important part of our team. John is a large shareholder and an advisor. And he has put together the discovery group, which we are part of. That's an overview of the discovery group. It's a loose alliance of, of companies. We all share an office. 
And there are a number of, of very large, successful companies in there. Bluestone Resources, for example, Great Bear, Fireweed Zinc. And it's a great group of people. And for us, as one of the smaller members of the group, it's invaluable to be part of, of this strong group. It gives us access to great people, great expertise, great contacts, access to capital. And we are just so much stronger than we would be if we were just out there by ourselves. MPD, that's the project where we just announced the discovery. Quick background of what it is. You see the map here. First point to take away, it's a large land holding, 78.5 square kilometers. And it's a great, great neighborhood. You see two of the largest copper mines in Canada on here, Highland Valley to our north and Copper Mountain to our south, both 20, 30, 40 kilometers away. And there are also lots of other projects, past producing mine. It's a very prolific trend, so great neighborhood. And this is a zoom in on the claim package. And you see there in the north, or at the top of the, the slide, Highway 97. You see at the bottom, Highway 5A, a transmission line. The point to take away here is it's great, great infrastructure. I can't stress how important that is, particularly for a porphyry project. It's firstly very cost effective to explore. Our exploration dollars go just so much further. And then going down the road, this project will take, have to take a much, much smaller hurdle than a project that is much more remote. So location is, is one of the key things that really attracted us to, to that project and why we acquired it. These are some historic drill results. I won't bore you with the, with the details. The takeaways are, there's a lot of historic drilling, 129 meters, sorry, holes, 25,000 meters of drilling. That drilling happened over almost 50 years, since the 60s, and um, was very importantly all very shallow, almost all very shallow. The deepest, the historic holes went down were approximately 200 meters, which is quite typically, that's what you would have done 20 years ago, 50 years ago, when you drilled for porphyries, and they literally only scratched the surface. They had many good results. Some of these grades are quite respectable, long intercepts, but what happened in 2013 was a company, the previous owner of the project, for the first time drilled deeper, drilled two holes, and what did they find? They found porphyry mineralization at depth with very interesting grades. They then ran out of money. Their bad luck, our good luck, we were able to acquire the project, and when we drilled in November, that was essentially our starting point. We drilled into the same zone they drilled at the time and tested it further, drilled deeper, and that is what we found. We made a discovery. Our best hole, we only drilled three holes, small initial program, and hole number three was the real winner. You see it here on the, on the left. It was a hole that was mineralized from top to bottom. The total intercept was 763 meters of mineralization of 0.28% copper. That's not a bad grade at all. To put it into context, the mines in the vicinity, Copper Mountain Highland Valley, they mine, they have reserves of 0.23 and 0.3% copper respectively. So we're very pleased with that. But more importantly, <coughs> within this very long intercept, we found much higher grade zones. So the best one here at the, the bottom were 102 meters of 0.68% um, copper equivalent. And that's essentially twice the grade than what the surrounding mines mine. So we were very, very pleased with that. And we knew um, already that we have a big system at our hands. And now we know that there are high grade zones in it. And that really kicked the doors wide open. I'd just like to draw your attention to these uh, little gray lines at the top. Um, very. Um, of faded lines. That's the historic drilling. That is sort of the drill horizon, the 200 meters that they drilled um, in the past. And if you look, our best grades here 
They are literally just below, between three and 500 meters down. So that's actually not very deep. We literally hit our best grades and twice the grade of what was ever found before, um, just below where everybody else drilled over the past decades. When I said the, this kicked the door wide open, this uh, picture of, gives a bit of a flavor. This shows the entire 10 square kilometer <coughs> square um, land package. And you see the colored blobs, the EM anomalies, the geophysical anomalies. If you plot um, soil geochemical anomalies on it, you will see exactly the same pictures. So that's the areas with altered rock, where there's something in the rock, where there's lots of copper, lots of gold in the surface. And you see the black dots in there, um, all the historic holes. Now, our hole that we drilled, oops, sorry. You just you have to wrap was up. Was here at the very bottom. So there's all this potential that we still have to drill, and we've got our work cut out um, for our next drill program that will be bigger and will start very soon in May. And there's lots of upside, lots of potential. We're very much, I'm very much looking forward to being back on the ground. Just very quickly, our capital structure. We had an announcement this morning. We are raising $3 million. We will rename our company. We will be Kodiak Copper going forward. And we have a $3 million financing open. It's more or less spoken for it, but I have a small allocation reserved if there's interest out of this conference. And if you're interested in more, please track me down. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Um, I will just ask two quick questions. First of all, three to 500 meters is where you found the goods just below mm -hmm. the drilling to date. But this is a 10 square kilometer target and you and I had chatted about the potential for the fact that we don't know really how deep it is and it might be shallower, it might be deeper. Uh, do you wanna just talk a little bit about that in the range of opportunity that there is on the project? Because I think people get a little bit nervous about deep things. Yep. Um, but yeah, just put that into context a bit. Mm -hmm. Well, where we drilled now, um, where we found our best grades, three to 500 meters down is not very deep. Just to put it into context, there's another very successful porphyry exploration company in BC, GT Gold. They found porphyry mineralization. They are drilling down to 1,500 meters. So um, these deposits can be very deep. From what we know now is we are um, in the periphery of the porphyry center, and it's an upright system, upright meaning it will come to the surface somewhere. And um, our exploration thesis is that there might be higher grade zones even closer to the surface than what we um, have found no now. And we are in our next program tracking down or targeting high grade zones and where they come closer to the surface. There you go. Um, and then just finally, uh, another sort of contextual question, certainly porphyries are the most important contributor to copper production in the world. Um, and people have been pretty excited about porphyries, specifically in British Columbia of late. There's been a bunch of deals on porphyries in British Columbia. Um, despite copper sentiment being all over the charts, how forward looking do you think copper companies are? If you define what looks like a good, a good copper porphyry, sort of how, yeah, how forward looking do you think copper companies are? How much do you think they care about sentiment versus getting their hands on good assets? I think they are very forward looking. All the majors, they have horizons of 30 years, 50 years, a long time out. And from my personal experience, we had lots of them knock on our doors. I know that many of the majors are really looking for good projects and they're turning lots of stones. I don't think we are an exception. We had, in January, I would say, I've spoken to 10 of them. Um, there are lots of, lots of um, big companies looking for replacement of declining minds that are coming to the end of their life. Perfect. Thank you.